you would think with all the tools available today that our communications would be efficient. But they really aren't. In fact, there are more opportunities for miscommunication. What are the reasons for this? Why is there miscommunication between an executive and assistant? Well, I have nine reasons that I want to share with you. First of all, different perceptions. In other words, your executive communicates with you and you maybe have a different perception of the words they're using or what their meaning is behind it and vice versa. Number two, we're in a hurry. That is to me a huge issue. We're all in a hurry. We're just running around. We're trying to keep up. And we don't have that time to massage our words, to massage what we want to say. And I'm guilty of this. I can tell you straight out, even in fact, while I have been writing my scripts for this training series, there are times when I wish I could have maybe had an extra hour or two hours to really massage what I wanted to say to you. But you know what? We just don't always have that luxury. Number three, technology. People shorthand their messages, right? I mean, think about it. With technology, we don't always thoroughly explain uh, our message or what we want to say to each other. And we actually shorthand it. Think about when you text someone. Do you spell out the word your or do you put you are? <laughs> so we're doing this all the time. And therefore, we're not, again, taking the time to deliver the message we really need to deliver. Number four. Oh, this is a good one. You're going to love it. Executives think their assistants should just know everything. They tell me, they assume that you know what they need, when they need it, how they need it. They believe you are mind readers. So while that is a compliment, that doesn't make your job any easier. Number five, some executives are timid about starting a conversation with their assistant. They'd rather just work in numbers and facts and figures or deal with analysis. It's really difficult for them to show that, you know, softer side or to have those personal conversations. Number six, some executives tell me they don't want to deal with emotions. In other words, they're afraid that if they give some feedback to their assistant, that their assistant's going to get emotional about it. So, of course, that isn't good. Um, so if you're on the other side of the desk and you are receiving feedback, remember it's just business and stay focused on the issue. Number seven, some executives have been burnt by bad past experiences with their assistants. Their assistants either didn't have the qualifications that they told the executive they had, or they've embarrassed their executive. Number eight, one of the parties is not actively listening, meaning your executive isn't really listening to you or you're not really listening to them. How many times do we think we're listening, but we're not? We're distracted by our phones or we're at our computers and we're watching messages pop up. Or if you're in your office, there's people walking past you. And so instead of paying attention to your executive and what they're saying, you're distracted by what's happening around you. Number nine, virtual connection does make it harder. Um, with more people working from home, we are using the virtual connections, right? And they're great, and I'm very thankful for the technology, but sometimes it does make it harder. There are a lot more reasons, but I think you get my message. So what are the solutions? Well, you're going to have to watch every video in the communications module for the answers.